and see what it looks like using song as well. Well, praise God, saints. Thank God for yet another day that the Lord has blessed us to see. Certainly we give God glory, honor, and praise for the mighty things he has done. We're excited to be with you again. To all our saints of Breakthrough, know that we love you, we miss you, we thank God for you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to another service of Breakthrough Ministries. Our saints will join us from various states, various other areas by way of Facebook. We're glad to have you. So glad that you, ch that you uh, chimed in with us today. As always, we ask you to reach out to someone else. Let someone know there's a word from the Lord today. And we're looking forward to hearing a great word from the Lord. We thank God again for you and keeping you and uh, for another week. So uh, as we look forward to going into the word of God, we are grateful for what God has done. Uh, he has spared us. He has kept us in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of everything that's going on. God is still God. And we are so excited. He is still in control. And that we are glad. And so we're grateful. So as always, saints of God, get your word, get your sword. Let's get ready to go into the word of God. Let's hear what thus said the Lord. And I know the Lord will bless you real good. Uh, if you haven't called someone, hashtag someone, uh, share this page with someone, let someone know there is a word from the Lord today. We certainly I give God honor again for all of the things to break through. I give God honor to uh, my wife, uh, to my family, uh, to uh, the, people, the men of God, uh, break through the women, the missionaries, uh, again, to all of the people of God and for your faithfulness. As we go into the word of God tonight, uh, this, on this morning, I want to ask if you would turn with me over in the book of Psalm. The 119 Psalm. We're going to take our text from the 119 Psalm today. Uh, we're going to drop down when you get over there to 119, drop down to the 68th verse. And there's about three or four verses there, a few verses we want to read. Psalm 119, 68 through verse 71. Let's read these scriptures together. When you get there, you will find these scriptures. Psalm 68, um, Psalm 119, 68 through verse 71. And the Bible read, Thou art good and dost good. Teach me thy statute. The proud has forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precept with my whole heart. Their heart is as far as Greece, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statute. I'm going to stop right there, Psalm 119, verse 71. I'll read it again. The Bible says, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statute. Let us pray. As we go before the Lord, Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you for this opportunity you've given us. We praise you. We honor you, Father, for what you shall speak to our mind, our heart. Open up our understanding that we not only be hearers of your word, but, Father, help us to apply your word. Help us to be doers of your word. In the name of Jesus, bind every hindering spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for what you shall speak to us. We give you glory and honor, and all the praise belong to you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And every heart say, thank God, amen, and amen. This is what I want to use for a thought this morning. On this last verse here, if you allow me to read it one more time, it says, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statute. I want to use for a topic this morning, it worked for my good. Come on, somebody and just declare, it worked for my good. That's what I want to talk to you about this morning. 
that it worked for your good. Even when it didn't feel like it, it was working for your good. I want to talk to you this morning on this topic as the, as the psalmist right here in this uh, topic here and in this scripture here about being afflicted and how the Lord used it for his good. Many times when we look at our life today, that as we go through situation, uh, we, we often uh, face things that we really, uh, sometimes face things that we really don't want to go through. Uh, sometimes there are uncomfortable circumstances in life that we go through. Most of us uh, will not sign up for classes or sign up for challenges in our life that, that will be difficult. Most of us will not sign up for heartaches and headaches and things of that nature that will cause us to step out of our comfort zone in order to move to another level. It's not something that we naturally will want to do. Uh, we will not want to deal with things outside of that comfort zone because it doesn't feel good when we go through some situation. It challenges us. It pushes us. Uh, it pushes us in areas that sometimes we don't want to be pushed into. Mm -hmm. uh, it pushes us in areas that, that we prefer not to be challenged into because, it, again, it's out of that comfort zone. Well, let me tell you, Paul in the Bible, Paul could testify of the things that he had to endure. Paul will let you know that there was time when he went through that things did not feel good, but he knew it was working for his good. He found out that even when it was working for his good things, sometimes he had to suffer through some things that he had preferred not to go through. When you look in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 9, the Bible says that Paul was yet breathing, uh, breathing out threats and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord to the to the high priest. The Bible said Paul was uh, had on this mission that he wanted to gather every believer of Christ, any believer that followed Christ, and he wanted them bound and put in prison. In Acts chapter 9, verse 1 and verse 2, it says, and it says, verse 2, it says, even he desired a letter uh, to Damascus, to the synagogue, that he found any disciples on the way, whether they were men or women, that he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. Paul at the time was Saul, and he was on a mission uh, to detain anybody who, uh, who was uh, was followers of Christ. He saw himself doing the Lord a favor, saw himself doing something that he thought what the Lord wanted him to do, even at the point of requesting a letter, an authority letter to make sure it was official or what he was doing. He saw himself doing something that he thought, certainly this is what God wanted me to do. Wanted himself to uh, lock, he wanted to lock up anybody, bound up anyone who was following Christ. Paul could testify, y'all, that he thought that it was in God's perfect will to do the things he was doing. He thought it was uh, God's desire that he would uh, bound and arrest uh, anyone that was followers. Not realizing it was God permissive will, but not his perfect will. The Lord had a greater call for Saul before his name became Paul. Paul could testify this, that on his journey, uh, he, the Bible said, as he came near Damascus, the Bible said he was knocked off his beast. And when he was knocked off his beast, the Bible said he heard a voice saying, Saul, why, thy, why persecute thy me? The Bible said he was blind for three days because the Lord wanted to get his attention. And the Bible says Saul did not eat anything. He prayed, uh, did not drink anything during this time, but he sought the Lord. And because he sought the Lord, the Lord had another course for his action. Saul at the time was Paul was facing what I would call a difficult time in his life. Being blind for three days is not something that you would take for life, not something that you would take for, for, for just a mundane or something easy. But being blind is no uh, simple task here. 
And the Bible said here he was blind. And though he was going about, thought he was doing God a favor, yes, the Lord had a greater height, a greater level, a greater call for Saul life. And the Bible says Saul at the time did not recognize what was happening mm -hmm. until God has gotten his attention. Sometimes the Lord has to get our attention. Sometimes he has to shake us and wake us and, and move us that around uh, to get us to, to recognize that he's trying to get our attention. He wanted to put Saul on a new course. Saul was on a course that he thought was just okay. A course that he thought was just fine. But the Lord had another plan for him. Mm -hmm. The Lord wanted to open his eyes. Uh -huh. Stop him in his track, what the Lord did, to realign, to adjust him to where he wanted to take Saul and not so much where Paul or Saul was trying to go himself. The Lord was working on his behalf, doing things that he didn't really recognize uh, that the Lord was working in the background. Sometimes God is readjusting. Sometimes he is redirecting. Sometimes the Lord is realigning our will with his will. And therefore, sometimes we don't recognize right off the cuff what the Lord was doing. And here he is, the Lord working through Saul. Saul could testify that not only did I experience uh, blindness, but Saul would also testify, listen, the Lord changed his name from Saul to Paul. Paul will let you know that, listen, sitting in prison uh, with, with Silas, the Bible says, that because of their doing the right thing, because they were preaching and teaching and doing the right thing and rebuked the demon out of this young girl. They found themselves in, the, in prison. Paul could testify that I've been through some things that did not feel good. It was out of my comfort zone, but at the time I didn't realize all that was going on. He would testify that sitting in prison, y'all, that while there he began to pray. Because they rebuked this demon out of his spirit, out of this young girl, the Bible said they went before the magistrate. And because they went before the magistrate, the Bible said they were beaten. And not only was they beaten out of his clothes, the Bible said they were, had, gave him many stripes and therefore were put in prison. And because they were put in prison now, here he is, Paul and Silas sitting in prison for doing the right thing. Sitting in prison is a time whenever it's easy for an individual to begin to have a pity party. Lord, I did everything you told me to do, and I still find myself in a unique situation. Still find myself in a precarious situation. And although I've done what you told me to do, I'm, Lord, I've, I've been rebuked. I'm doing the right thing. I still find myself in a difficult situation here. The Bible says, listen now, Saul rebuked him and they, this young lady, this spirit, and yet they found, he and Silas found himself in prison for doing the right thing. They found themselves in a place that they didn't want to be in. Found themselves staring at prison bars. Found themselves uh, uh, in a place where it did not feel so good for doing the right thing. You got to know what the Bible says now. Whatever you got to know that the Bible says all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose. You got to know it's working for your good. And even if it doesn't feel like it, you got to know it's working for your good. Paul realizes as he talked to the church in, in, in Roman, let him know that all things work together for for your good. If you're a child of the most high God, you got to know it's working for your good. And even when it doesn't feel like it, it's working for your good. Come on, somebody declare today, it's working for my good. It will work for your good, people of God, no matter how it might start. And it's not predicated on how it starts, not predicated on what route they shall take, but you got to know that when God is in it, It'll work for your good. Come on, somebody say, it worked for my good. Now, 
and Paul and Silas who sat in prison, they began to sing, the Bible said, they began to sing and pray unto the Lord. A time when they should have been sitting there having a pity party, they began to give God praise, but yet because they rebuked the spirit from this young lady, this demonic spirit, and found themselves in prison, but the Bible said they began to sing and pray and give God glory. Listen now, understand people, God, when the Lord began to move on your behalf, when the Lord began to show up and show out, this is not the time to get sad and upset, but this is the time to say, God, I'm going to give you a praise. The Bible said they began to sing and they began to pray. And they began to, as they began to pray, they did not complain, but they began to give God praise. They refused to look at their situation as, oh, I'm just down. But they began to look at what the Lord is about to do. And as they sing, as they pray, the Bible said, listen now, don't you know God came to their rescue? God began to answer their prayer. It shifted their focus. It changed their focus. It, it changed their thought that God is working on their behalf. Sometimes you got to shift your thinking. Come on, tell yourself. You got to shift your thinking. You got to change your thinking. Change your mindset. Mm -hmm. and they began to praise God. And they began to change things. They began to sing to the Lord. It began to change things. They began to look at this from a different perspective. That the Lord is still in it. And it changed their mindset. Come on, somebody say, it'll work for your good. The Bible said not only now with Paul sitting in prison, but... As they began to pray, as they began to sing unto the Lord, the Bible said, listen, son, there was a great earthquake. And the Bible said the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately the doors were open. Why? Because they went to another level. They decided not to stay right where they are, but they, but, but, but they decided to give God praise and give him glory and allow the Lord to do what the Lord is doing. Somebody declare this morning, it'll work for your good. You got to know this morning, saints of God, it'll work for your good. Nobody could testify like Paul could of the things that the Lord had brought him through, of the things how God made ways out of nowhere. My, 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 how God moved in different situations, in different areas in his life to prove that I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Listen, saints of God, God will raise up a confidence in us whenever we go through situation to encourage us, to build us, to take us to another level. Mm -hmm. He will give confidence that we can trust him and believe him. He will raise our, our insight to see him at another level. Uh -huh. He will give you a new testimony. Why? Because now you begin to look at God at another level. You begin to trust him whenever you begin to go through a situation. He will give you a testimony and prove to you that I'm your provider. I'm your sustainer. I'm your keeper. Mm -hmm. If you're bold enough, let me speak to those who are bold enough. Say, I did not ask for some challenges sometimes. I did not ask for this thing that I'm going through. But listen, but the Lord knew that I needed it. Come on. Somebody, if you're bold enough and say, I didn't ask for it. But the Lord knew that I needed it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I didn't ask for it. But he knew that where he's taking me, I needed more. I needed more than where I am right now. He knew that where that he was taking me, I needed more than the level that I have right now. And I needed more of him. If you're bold enough, come on and say, I didn't ask for it, but the Lord know I needed more. He knew that I needed more confidence. Mm. Mm -hmm. Needed that, you know that I needed a more of unshakable faith. I needed a, 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 a unbreakable faith. He knew that I needed more to be able to stand and see the salvation of the Lord. I needed more, uh, but when he was working on my behalf, he knew that, that where he was taking me, uh, that he needed to elevate uh, my confidence. He knew he needs to elevate your confidence. Where the Lord is taking you, he wants to elevate you higher. And therefore, you need more than where you are. And sometimes God would allow things to go on, to happen in your life, to elevate you higher. And although you didn't ask for it, but God said you're going to need this here because what you have is good enough for now. But it's not good enough for where I'm taking you. And therefore, 
I'm going to take you higher. And oftentimes, we don't want to go through the challenge. Oftentimes, we don't want to deal with all the struggles and, the, and, the, and all other things that come with growing and expansion. And, but the Lord knows that we needed more. What the Bible lets us know here, listen, y'all. Uh, not only did he say we need more, mm -hmm, but listen, although you didn't ask for it, God knew that you needed it. When the Lord was talking to Paul, he knew that, listen, that he had a greater level for Paul. He knew that he was taking it. He wanted a greater belief in Paul. He knew that he wanted a, a, a greater trust in Paul. And he knew that Paul was the one that could handle where he was about to take him. He knew that everything that Paul was about to go through was going to make him stronger. The Lord does the same for us. He knows that we need more. And oftentimes, he ain't calling you to a title or position, but a closer relationship with him, a deeper relationship, a greater, a greater understanding, and a greater anointing uh, on your life. So when he speaks to you, you know it's God speaking. The psalmist right here, in Psalm 19, the psalmist right here, Tef is the writer here, and Tef writes this, uh, these few scriptures here. He says, Thou art good and does good. Lord, Tef, right here in Psalm 119, he writes these, this short, these few, few, few verses here. He said, Thou art good and does good to teach me thy way. In other words, what Tef says, he says, Lord, you're good. Mm -hmm. And not only are you good, but you're good and you're kind. And you, you, you love me enough to teach me your commandments. Mm -hmm. You love me enough to make sure that, listen, that I don't go straight, that I'm moving up higher in you. So the writer writes here and reminds the Lord just how good he is, just how awesome he is, mm -hmm. just how good he really is and how kind he really is, how good he, how much he really cares about him. So as he writes, he lets him know that, Listen, Lord, you care enough to teach him your ways, to teach him your statutes, to teach him your principle, to teach him your law. This is what he's saying, Lord. That's just how much you love me, Lord. You allow me to go through some things to teach me. And oftentimes, people, God, we don't want to go through. Come on, somebody say it'll work for your good, though. As you go through, God I will use it for your good. And times we don't want to go through, but Tim said, listen, he said, thou art good, Lord, because you know what I need. Mm. You know what I need more than I know myself, what he says. And you know it to, to get me to where you're taking me. You have to mold me, shape me, and take me to a level that sometimes I don't want to go there. But because God is good, because you know my future, because you know what, what holds in my life, you will prepare me for what's coming down the road. So he took him right here. He said, thou art good. Not only are you good, God, but you're good enough to teach me your status. You're good enough to make sure that I don't miss what you're trying to show me. To make sure I don't miss where you're taking me. And even though my flesh don't want to go through, even though my flesh is warred against it, but God, you know, and sometimes I, I got to realize it's working for my good. And even if it doesn't feel good, it's working for my good. Mm. So the Bible says, you know what he says? The proud have fought a lie against me. What Tim right? He said, not only did they pour the lie against him, he said the proud have talked about him with bold heart. They have obeyed him, said, but yet with everything they have said, and even in their, their mischief against him, he says here that I have kept thy precept with my whole heart. Tim said, regardless of what folks have said about him, I've learned to keep God's precept. I've learned to keep God's law. I learned to keep God's principle. I learned to trust God. When I don't can't trust him, when I can't see him, I trust him anyway. Because I know if God be for me, who can be against me? And Tep begins right here. He said, not only did I learn here, I've learned to keep his precepts in the name of Jesus. So thank God for what the psalmist said here. Even when others have done him wrong, look what Tep said there. He said, I remain steadfast with all of my heart. 
I remained faithful into God's instruction and I kept his commandments. Uh, he did not allow his situation to deter him, but cause him and not to miss what the Lord had for him. The Bible says that, uh, that I kept my, my, my that precept. I kept thy laws uh, with all my heart. I did not sway. I did not yield. I did not I remain steadfast. This is what Tep says. I stayed fast unto the Lord and I trusted God mm -hmm. in all that was going through. It did not feel good sometimes. How many know there's some times you're going to go through in your life and it won't feel good. There's a time when the Lord is moving in your life and it don't look like it's going to happen. It won't look good. But this is the time when he said you got to know that it's working for your good. You got to know that the Lord is on your side. When you don't can't see it, you got to know, learn to trust God anyway. Tim said, listen, it did not feel good. Mm -hmm. It did not look good. But he understood that the Lord wasn't finished with him yet. He understood that the Lord was still working on his behalf. And then this is what he says in verse 7. In verse 7, he said, their heart is as fat as grease. But I delight in the Lord. This is what he says. He says, they have no understanding. Uh huh. But I find pleasure in the Lord's law. He says, although they have no understanding of what's going on, but I can find pleasure in the Lord's law. Mm -hmm. I can find pleasure because I know the Lord is still working on my behalf. I can find pleasure because I know the Lord is not finished with me yet. I can find pleasure because I know God is still working on my situation. Come on, somebody say, it'll work for your good. Uh-huh, it'll work for your good. He said, they did not understand what the Lord was doing. And if the truth be told, there's times I don't know what the Lord's doing. There's times you don't know what the Lord's doing. But one thing we do know is God is in it. He'll turn it for our good. Mm -hmm. If God is in it, he'll turn it for towards our good. So the Bible writer let us know and said, listen now, even naysayers did not understand, but he finds pleasure in the Lord. Uh -huh. When those talked about him uh -huh, and thought he should do wrong, but he found pleasure in the Lord. The, the writer says that, listen, I find pleasure in the Lord's law. I find pleasure in knowing that where I am, is not where I'm staying. That I'll, I'll give you. That's a good place to give God praise right there. Mm -hmm. Where I am is not where I'm staying. Yes, I might have to go through, but where I am is not where I'm going to stay. That's a good place to tell the Lord, thank you, Holy Ghost, hallelujah, because I know I got better days ahead. I know the Lord is going to turn it around. I know God is not finished with me yet. I can praise him in advance. I just wonder if anybody know how to give God an advance praise. But whatever you're confronted with, they say, God, I thank you anyway. I'm going to give you an advance praise because I know if God is in it, there is no limit. Listen, this is what he says. He said, I find pleasure knowing that it's not the end. I find pleasure knowing that God is still working on my case. He hasn't forgotten about it. Come on, somebody say, I didn't ask for it. Mm, come on, declare, I didn't ask for it. But the Lord knew that I needed it. I didn't ask for this challenge. I didn't ask for this heartache. But the Lord knew that, listen, where he's taking me, I needed what he's about to get for in my life. So the writer says, some kind of thing where he says something very profound here. Unlike most what most of us say, most of us wouldn't find the same conclusion. He declared in verse 71, he says, it is good for me that I have been afflicted. My, 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 he said it was good, y'all, that I've been afflicted. What in the world you're saying, preacher? He said it's good that I had to go through a situation. It was good that I learned that I had to go through. Why? Because the Lord took me through. When you look at this from the natural, you begin to look, uh, you look at, if you look at it from the natural perspective, it don't make sense sometimes to say it was good that I go through but when you begin to look at it from the spiritual perspective, understand that it was a good because the law was still working on your behalf. The Lord had not given up. He said, my afflictions were good for me. This is what Tim says. He said, not only were they good, but they made me to learn 
his commandment. They cause me to open up my understanding. Mm -hmm. Cause me to stop in my track sometime. Mm -hmm. Cause me to slow down sometime. Mm -hmm. Cause me to stop and pray sometime. Mm -hmm. When I get so in a rush, the Lord will stop and say, wait a minute, mm -hmm. I got some more for you. I'm getting ready to take you higher. Mm -hmm. I'll allow this for you to go through a situation mm -hmm. in order that you'll recognize and know who I am. Mm -hmm. I allow you to go through that you'll learn to give me praise in the midst of your storm. Mm -hmm. Will you allow God in the midst of your affliction to prove to you that he is your creator? Mm -hmm. He is your sustainer. Mm -hmm. And this is what Tim said. He said, it was good that I was afflicted. My, 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 it was good. But why? Because the Lord began to minister to me. He began to show me another level. He began to show me things I never seen before. He began to anoint my ears that I never heard before. He began to open up my understanding. This is what he was saying. This is why he said, it was good that I was afflicted. Why? That I might know your statue, Lord. That I might know your voice, Lord. You know what he says? I didn't ask for the trial, didn't ask for the tribulation, did not ask for the storm. But don't you know, listen, that it was working for my good. I found out going through had some benefits. Come on, somebody say, going through had some benefits. The psalmist says here, it was good for me that I've been afflicted. Why? It was good that the Lord took me through my battle. Mm -hmm. I had to, I went through because the Lord was still working on my hand. Going through gave me a new perspective of who he is. Going through called me to see God at another level. Called me to learn to trust God at another level. Called me to learn to depend on God at another level. Come on, somebody say, going through is work for your good. Hallelujah. God would allow some things of your affliction in order to work for your good. Mm -hmm. To prove to you that, listen, that I am taking you higher. I will elevate you higher, a greater anointing, a greater understanding. The Bible says that I might learn the Lord's way. This is what Tim said. It was good that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes, that I might learn your ways, God, that I might learn your voice, God, that I might you might open up my understanding, Lord, that when you speak, mm, Lord, that I hear you. When you speak, I be quiet. When you speak and you tell me to speak, I speak. Why? Because, Lord God, you are taking me through. You caused me to see you at another level. You caused me to look to you more than I look to myself. Caused me to look to you more than I look to my bank account. Caused me to look to you more than I look to my friends. Why? Because you are God. He says here, listen, that not only did I learn that, that, that going through has benefits, but the law was working on my behalf. Come on, somebody say, I didn't ask for it, but I found out that when God is in it, mm, there are no limits. When God is in it, mm -hmm, I found out that it worked for my good. What I thought, listen, uh, was a good environment, but when God was in it, when he's in it, he would take what, what's there and make it even better. Why? Because it'll work for your good. So when we look at this, the Bible lets us know David says here, he said over in Psalm 27, said, I learned how to wait on the Lord. Going through my affliction, this is what Temp said, as going through, listen, David said, I learned how to wait on God in the midst of going through. I learned how to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. I learned how to, listen, he says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. As I'm going through, I'm learning how to wait on God. God will mold and shape you. He will build you. He will elevate you. And even though you don't want to go through, you ought to declare I'm going through for the Lord because on the other side of through, God's got a blessing waiting for me. And I know on the other side of through, the Lord will begin to minister to me. He will begin to take you higher in him. Going through will give you strength, saints of God. Going through will call you to see him at another level. You thought you were okay, mm -hmm. but God said, listen, where you are is only good for right now, but there's much more that I have for you. In order to get you where I'm trying to get you at, there, I need to take you deeper in me. I need to take you higher in me. I need to expand your understanding. Mm -hmm. I need it for you to know who I am, and therefore, sometimes you have to go through to not allow the Lord to do what the Lord wants to do. I'm reminded of the woman at the well. 
The Bible says over in John chapter 4, the woman at the well, when she came to the well, she came at a time when she was not expecting anybody to be there. And she came with a time when she thought that only she would be there, but not realize it. When she got to the well, Jesus was there waiting on her. My, 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 when she got there, the Bible said she went there expecting nobody not to meet anybody, but she met Jesus. And he began to tell her everything about her lifestyle. He began to tell her what, all about her life and, and, and people in her life. The Bible said she dropped her water pot. Went running back to the city and said, come see a man. Listen, she tried to get there when nobody was there. She wanted to get there when nobody was expecting to be there. But because she met, had an encounter with Jesus, because she met Jesus, listen, the problem shift from not, not no one there to I need everybody to come see. Come see a man, what she said. The Bible says she went running back to the city saying, come see a man who told me all about my troubles, told me all of everything about what was going on. Come see a man. And this is what the Lord says, saints of God. I'm working for your good. Mm, every, every affliction, it'll work for your good. She said, come see a man. Mm, she wanted everybody to know that. Listen to that. She met somebody that, that told her everything that, that she didn't even know about or things that she wasn't even had to share with others. But he told her about her situation. God has more in store. Somebody ought to declare, he has more in store for me. He has more for you. Listen, that day, the, the, the psalmist said that it was good that I was afflicted. Why? That I might learn more. God has more. And sometimes he will take you to a, through a situation in order that you might learn more. Every trial, somebody ought to say, it was working for my good. Every test, it was working for my good. Every ditch that the digger dug thought that it was trapped me, it was working for my good. Every trap that the haters set for me, it was working for my good. Every time the adversary thought he had me down, it was working for my good. I was on my way back up. That's why the writer said it was good that I've been afflicted. It was good that I might learn your law, Lord. Sometimes we don't want to go through, but I come to tell you today, saints of God, go through giving God praise. Go through, Lord, what you showed me, Lord. Go through, God, take me higher in you. Not asking for title, but God, for where you're taking me. I need more of you, God. Need more of your anointing. Need more of your understanding. Anoint my ears, God. Take me higher in you, Lord. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you for your affliction. I just need to talk to those bold enough. Some of you are not bold enough yet. Some of you are still timid, but that those who are bold enough and say, God, I thank you. Because listen, when you take me through, you won't leave me by myself. You won't just leave me out there. But good God Almighty, where are you taking me, Lord? Mm, my God, I give you praise right now, Lord. I learned to go through, Lord, even in my afflictions. I learned that I can grow, Lord. Learn that I can lean on the Lord. Somebody say, lean on the Lord. Mm. I used to sing in the old school, I'm learning to lean on the Lord. Even in my afflictions, I lean on him. I'm learning to call on him in my affliction. I'm learning to look to him in my affliction. I'm learning to depend on him in my affliction. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, tell him, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for taking me through. Thank you, Lord. I'm giving a new perspective, a new view, God. I'm the God that in the midst of every trial, even with COVID, Lord, I give you praise, God. I'm in the midst of counsel, Lord, I look to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the midst of job layoff, I'm calling on on you, Lord, because you're not finished with me yet. You ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Mm, Tim said it was good that I was afflicted. Why? Because the Lord has more. Where you are is not where you stand. Where you are is only good enough for where you are. 
But God said, where I'm taking you, I need you to have more than a first grade level, spiritual level. But I need to take you higher in me. I need it for you to prove, need for you to know that, listen, that I got you on this. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. We give God glory, give him praise, and give him honor for the mighty things he has done. People, God, certainly we thank God for his mighty acts. Praise God for what the Lord has done. I'm stopping. But look what Tev said. Tev said, it was good that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes, Lord. <clears throat> it was good that I had to go through. Lord, you were making me better. You were making me stronger. When I didn't even realize it myself, but you were making me stronger. And this is what the Lord says to the people of God today. Going through make you stronger. Times when you don't want to go through. But the Lord said, I'm making you better. I'm anointing you. Calling you a greater understanding. Greater trust in me. Greater walk. Because you're learning to depend on him more than you depend on yourself. Listen, every head is bowed, every heart is open. I want you to know things of God, people of God, those who are watching me by Facebook, wherever you're watching me from, I want you to know it'll work for your good. I want you to know, listen, as people of God, God would allow us to go through situations, afflictions that make us better, not to tear us down. But where you are, God says, I need to take you higher. Where I'm taking you, yes, where I'm taking you, you need more. Where I'm taking you at, you need more than what you have right now. Every head is bowed, every heart is open. If you're not saved, let me offer up to you salvation. Because where you are, God says, listen, I have so much more for you. If you haven't given your life to Christ, he said, this is the time you can do that. With everything going on, uh, what better time to give your life to Christ? If you are saved, what better time to say, God, strengthen me. Take me higher in you. Open up my understanding, my mind. Help me to see you for who you are. Help me to learn to trust you more than I trust myself. What an opportunity he's given us. Listen, every head is bowed. Every heart is open. If you're not saved, pray this with me. Father, forgive me of my unrighteousness. Father, I ask you to, to forgive me, wash me, cleanse me, make me whole in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the opportunity, God, and you spared me. You did not allow me to die in my sin. But God, you've given me another chance. And for that, I give you praise and I thank you. So Father, even now, Right now, Lord, I ask you, Father, that you will come into my life. Save me, Father. Fill me with your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I thank you for keeping me. I thank you for sparing me in the name of Jesus. Help me, Father, to be the person you will have me to be. I give you the glory and honor. If you're saved, Father, I pray, God, that you will strengthen this man of God, this woman of God, this child of God. Strengthen their heart. And Lord, even now, times when they don't want to go through situation, your word declared it was good <clears throat> that we were afflicted. It was good that we went through because we learned from you, God. So, Father, help us to learn. Help us to look to you, the author and finish of our faith. In the name of Jesus, help us to look to you. We'll look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help come from you, Lord, who made heaven and earth. So, Father, we look to you in the name of Jesus that you will strengthen in the midst of every trial, every storm, every affliction. You are there, and for that we give you praise, that we give you glory, for that we give you honor. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And every heart say, thank God, amen, and amen. Come on, somebody declare, it worked for my good. It worked. For your good. The Lord will work for your good. Let me encourage you, people of God. 
If as always, that you can sow a seed and to break through, know that you can sow by going on our website. Uh, you can sow cash by web cash out, uh, or you can go to our Givelify. Uh, it should be on our screen that you can sow. Uh, go to our PayPal account, our website, either one of those, and you can sow. But certainly, we praise God. If this has been a blessing to you, we encourage you uh, to meet us back again next week. And let's hear what thus says the Lord. We give God glory and honor and praise. Every head is bowed, every heart is up. Father, we thank you for what we've heard, what our hearts have felt, what our ears have heard. In Jesus' name we pray that every heart say, thank God, amen, and amen. To God be the glory, and may heaven smile on you, is our prayer.